Welcome back everybody, Christopher Naiman. So, now we're back on my vintage Singer 401A and I'm doing some decorative stitching testing. And I'm doing it on a thread that, uh, again, people would say, oh, you can't use that thread. Guess what? I got this on eBay. I got this on eBay like probably uh, six, seven years ago, I'd say. And look, I'll show you all of it on my wall. And I'd used it to do free motion embroidery and I loved it so much I ordered some more. And the way I have it feeding on my machine is if you look down here, I have a separate thread tower, standalone. Um, that's good. They, they make these for cones, and that's the best way to feed this because I'll tell you why. And, okay, the lady who complains about me using my camera without a tripod, you're going to you're gonna have to be quiet on this one because I need to move this around. All right, so if you put it on here, it's causing a lot of pull and drag, you see? And then... There's too much, just too much weight to pull. When you put it on this way, there's no pull. It's freely coming up. Now you newbies, this is gonna be new for the newbie people to learn. For the veterans, this is something you probably already know. And if you already know this, great. Give us a hands up on, give us a like, give us a thumbs up on the video, on, okay? All right, now, here's what you need to do this type of stitching. You need, of course, I'm using regular bobbin thread, um, regular construction bobbin thread. I could use um, embroidery bobbin thread as well, but I'm not repeating the same spot over and over again. It's, it's just a tight stitch. The reason why you would use embroidery bobbin thread when you're doing free motion embroideries because sometimes when you're doing free motion embroidery you keep going over the same area over and over and over and there's a lot of thread buildup. This is just a close buildup and it's working fine. The next thing you need is a satin stitch foot and I bought this on eBay. This is a, a Singer slant stitch satin stitch foot. What a satin stitch foot is, let me take this out and show you. Underneath now here, I'm going to put, put two feet together here, okay? You've got two different feet here. This is the satin stitch foot, and this is the standard straight and zigzag foot, okay? The reason why some people, when they try to do a satin stitch and it catches on them and it won't feed is because under these feet, if you look on this one, see, it's all flat. If you look on this one, let me see if I can try to get this in the, in the camera better. I don't know if you could. I don't know if we could see very good. But you have to trust me on this because it's so clear you can't even see. But underneath this foot is a hollowed-out groove, which allows a buildup of thread to pass through very easily. It will not pass through on this foot because there is no hollowed-out groove, and the satin stitch foot has a hollowed-out groove in the middle that will allow it to pass through. Now, the next thing you do when you're doing decorative stitching like this is you want to knock down your tension. I normally sew at about a five, so I've got it down now to three. I got this set to three. Now, let me put my camera on the tripod and I will show you some stitching to show you how well this works. Oh, before I do that, I do want to tell you I have a top stitch needle in here. And the top stitch needle is a size 14. The top stitch needle, size 14. Okay, now, I'm going to take some of you back a few years. How many of you remember this metallic denim? It was silver on one side and kind of a black on the other. There for a while, they were making all these jeans with this. And then Walmart started selling it. This is about 10 years old. I, 8 to 10 years old this is in my stash. And uh, I made a nice jacket out of it one time and I gave it away to a friend. And she absolutely loved it. I um, love this. This is a denim. This is a denim. And I went to Walmart the other day and I found they still had some more they were selling. So they must still be making this or they must have made a hell of a lot of it and they can't get rid of it after 10 years. But I think it's really cool. I may go back and give me some more because you never know. I might make myself a pair of jeans out of this. Okay, now a couple things I want to cover here. You can see I'm going to sew over a heavy denim. All right. If you're sewing over a light cotton, what you want to do is get yourself some interfacing. Or not, I'm sorry, not interfacing. You want to get um, a stabilizer, the kind they use for embroidery. And then you will do some testing to determine how many layers of the stabilizer you need to put under here. And I would suggest using a tearaway stabilizer. Now, the reason why you need a stabilizer on fine 
fabrics, like this is very thin here. If I try to sew a satin stitch on here, because it's thin, it's all going to crumble up and, and break down on me. The, the, the house is going to cave in, in other words. But if I put stabilizer material under here, for like you use for embroidery, like I said, it's going to hold this nice and, and firm, and it will not cave in on you. Okay? So let me show you this actual stitching and you can see how well this, this really sews, okay? Make sure your threads are out, and here we go. So let me zoom in a little bit here for you, and see if you can get close, you can see me doing this closer. Here we go. Isn't that beautiful how it's sewing? And you see, it's moving. All that heavy buildup of that satin decorative stitch is moving underneath. I have it set to the slowest it'll go without standing still. And it's, it's, it's moving under that foot beautifully. If I had used this foot, it would never have worked. It would have gotten hung up. That's something I never knew when I first learned how to sew. And I was doing, I wanted to do satin stitching and it wouldn't go and I blamed the machine. I said, oh, this stupid machine won't do a satin stitch. Years later, I learned because I didn't have a satin stitch foot and that, that inexpensive sewing machine that I had, it wasn't the problem. And then I pulled that machine out of the closet, put the satin stitch foot on and voila, it went through like butter. See, operator error. I wasn't educated when I began. It's nice. All right, so let me just take this out and show you. And the reason why you turn this, the stitch your attention down is because you want the thread to be pulled underneath. Let me show you underneath. See, it's perfectly fine to have that that top thread being pulled to the bottom. You'll see this on uh, also on on uh, your computer sewing machines will do this, and this is how it should be, because you don't want the thread pulling to the top. Now, if you're worried about you want it to look the same on the bottom as you do the top, then use the same thread for the bobbin, okay? Use the same thread for the bobbin. And there it is. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so I wanted to show you that. And there are so many capabilities on any sewing machine. It doesn't matter how expensive or how inexpensive it is. It's the operator's knowledge on how to use it. It's called being mechanically inclined. All right, and remember, this was this thread. This thread on eBay I bought. And this is all cotton thread. And you see how linty it is? It is linty. And not because it's been sitting up there, but it is linty. So one thing you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you clean your machine up. But what I love about this, that people don't understand about why some of us, want, why some of us artists like to use linty thread, is because when we're doing thread painting, it fills it up. It fills it up. That, that furry little thread will fill up your areas here. Now, this type of thread is what I'm talking about, the linty type thread, okay? And all you want to make sure you do is you want to make sure that you keep your bobbin area cleaned out and your top area cleaned out. And that's on any sewing machine. But this, this thread here, yes, this is linty thread. And it is a cotton. And it works wonderful. Just wonderful. That's your tip for today. I hope I explained some things for you to know better. The newbie people, you've been educated a little bit more. You have a little more confidence now. So go out and try it and uh, see what your results are. You take care, everybody, until my next video. Bye now.